For this tips and tricks video, I thought I'd show you how I dialed in a brand new Framing Square 500 that Milescraft was nice enough to send me for this demo. Right now I'm using it right out of the packaging with no adjustments made to it whatsoever. And here's one that I've owned for a while that has been adjusted and yes it does see a lot of use in my shop. You can see the lines are a little off, but don't worry, we can fix that. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the I started off by clamping a scrap piece of MDF off the side of my smaller workbench. I then grabbed my exactor. Now if you don't own one of these, you can use a combination square for this part. I then set my digital calipers to 2 inches, and then I locked that reading in. Using the depth gauge on the calipers, I set my exactor to 2 inches. Using a scribe, now if you don't think you own a scribe, check your combination square because chances are, you have one. I then butted up my exactor against the edge of the MDF and scribed a line at the 2 inch mark. With that marked, I used my automatic center punch to punch a small hole in the middle of the scribe line. I then grabbed an 18 gauge wire nail and hammered it in. Why you might ask? Well, you'll see later. Now to remove the rail from your framing square, all you have to do is remove the two nuts and bolts that keep the rail secure to the square. The tools you'll need are a 7mm wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm sure it'll take you less time to take the square apart than it did for me to find that 7mm wrench. So I'm using that wire nail as a pivot point for the framing square. I grab my large 12 inch Johnny square and slid it into the framing square. Not only is the wire nail tight against the 2 inch notch, the framing square is now at a perfect 90 degrees. There's absolutely no play with the framing square sitting against the Johnny square, so I clamped the Johnny square down first, and then the framing square. Now, it's time for the good stuff. I had to remove the Johnny square because it was interfering with putting the rail back on the framing square. I found it easier to use a clamp and have it hold the rail flush against the substrate while I was reattaching the hardware. Once both sides were secured, I was done. After it's all said and done, the framing square, according to my digital angle finder, sits at a perfect 90 degrees. I use a 2 inch notch on the framing square to draw a line and compare that to a line I drew with the 2 inch setting I set on the exactor previously in the video. I'll let you be the judge on how well they line up, because to me, I think it looks spot on. Which it should, since I based it set up on the exactor setting. On that note, I'm going to call this tips and tricks video done. I hope you found this video useful and somewhat entertaining. If you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or questions about this video, please feel free to leave those below and I will address them when I can. As always, thanks for watching. And until next time, take care and have a good one.